This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at the Bank Jack Station in Thailand, and behind me here is the Volvo XC40. <laughs> yes, today we're going to do a range test in Thailand. You know, this car is thirsty in Norway, Sweden. It is also thirsty in Thailand. It's relatively hot here. See, I'm wearing my Schwartz here. So I guess we'll find out. I will drive at night. I think the driving condition should be good at night. No traffic, no sun and everything. We charge the car to 100% at the bank jack uh, with the P, P, A, P chargers now. So I'm ready to go. I had to move over there because there's a B with the other three who wants to charge there. But okay, this is the Volvo XC40. This is the all-wheel drive. So it's just like the one in uh, Norway, except for that the steering wheel is on the right side with the wrong side. Should have been left side with the right side. But other than that, it looks and feels just like the regular Volvo. You see, we have 100% now. And we will, wait, come on. There, yeah, so the plan, oh, we have Google. Oh, I forgot, we have Google, this is so nice. I can show, oh, everything goes so smooth with Google here. You see, we're in Chiang Mai, and the plan is to drive roughly to Lampang. I think actually we might be able to reach turn, which is over here, roughly. So let's see if we just do it like this, roughly. And then we say start. 170. Yeah, yeah, we should at least reach the turn. So, yeah, we will see how thirsty this car is in Thailand. And you see it's 23 degrees Celsius, which is nice and warm here. So, I guess I will just reset once more. I think I already reset. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. everything has been reset. Well, it has 15,000 kilometers on the anemometer. I will also check how much degradation we have here versus the test we have in Norway. It should get roughly 75 kilowatt hour, uh, or we'll see, I guess. All right, let's go. All right, we're on the move now. So we have the cruise at 92 kilometers per hour to match 90 uh, GPS speed. And uh, you see that over here in Chiang Mai, we are 266 meters over sea level. So I also use the range optimizer. Every time you turn it on, well, actually, I will show you here. It says that, yeah, it will actually limit the uh, HVAC uh, for a little bit, but okay, no big deal because at night, we don't have to have too aggressive HVAC settings. So hopefully we get the best result now at night. So you see, well, the temperature is dropping a little bit. So 22 degrees Celsius, it will probably be a little bit colder, especially over that mountain, Dwight Kuntan, we are going to pass. So yeah, it's really nice and calm here at night now. It, oh yeah, roughly 11 at night. So this is where I actually prefer testing. <laughs> when I test it, I prefer it at the day, I mean at night, because daytime, the roads are just too busy. So yeah, now you normally just switch out of this one and then go with the map and then I like having it in the overview mode like this. So we see the map overview. So I know that I started to know the route now where we're supposed to go. So right, and then so far, yeah, we have to wait for the, the consumption to stabilize. See here, we choose here to show the, the distance and uh, the kilometer, I mean the, the consumption, but uh, it needs to stabilize a little bit before we see some real numbers. Hmm, now they've been driving a little bit on this uh, semi-bumpy uh, uh, concrete road. I feel like uh, this Volvo XC40 kind of has a weird bounce. And when I look up now, the wheelbase is 2.7 meters only. So compared to its uh, competitor, which is the uh, Model Y, Model Y has almost 2.9 meter wheelbase. And even though okay, the Model Y suspension is a, bit, a little bit harsher, I feel like uh, the comfort in the Model Y has Okay, and it's not it's not as soft, but it has a, a nicer ride because of the long wheelbase versus the XC40. So this is stuff that I never noticed when I tested in Norway, because over there we have fairly smooth roads. But I realized that <laughs> we don't have nice and smooth roads all over the world, like here or maybe other places in Asia or even, I don't know, Australia, some people mention. Well, we have nice interior lights, you see here some gentle light in the dashboard and the side panels here also also in the door pockets and then yeah remember to abc always barefoot cruising <laughs> yeah and then uh, here also we have uh, in the footballs you can see wifey's shoes <laughs> we are now close to lampang see we have driven uh, this far yeah and uh, the consumption right now is 182 watt hour per kilometer. That is very good, but we have gone downhill, around 70 meters downhill. So uh, of course that is also uh, the, the reason why the consumption is kind of low, but I wonder if it's going to be roughly 
190 watt hour kilometer. But I will show you also the bug here in uh, Volvo and also in Polestar is that we have driven one hour now and uh, 86 kilometers. So it's actually 86 kilometers per hour average speed and then the car reports 89. So it's consistently reporting three kilometers per hour lower average speed. I've known this bug for a long time <laughs> and it still hasn't been fixed yet. Okay, we're just gonna drive a little more. Actually a lot more. We still have 80%. So yes, it's gonna be a long drive today. We are a little bit south of Lampang now and um, I've decided to stop the 90 test here. I think it's good enough. So you see here we draw 100. Well, I can show you guys more detail here. Yeah, we draw 126 kilometers. I don't know about distance error. Uh, okay, um, maybe eventually I'll find out. But anyway, so uh, the consumption is 185 watt hour per kilometer. And uh, what is important is that we are now at the same elevation we were at in Chiang Mai. Uh, so there's no uh, elevation difference. And then when it comes to wind, I also checked the wind beforehand and there's almost no wind. So which means that this is already a good, good enough measurement because normally, I, I don't know if you noticed, but in Thailand, I've done 90 tests, but this area here is quite empty. So I'm, I'm actually going to do 120 tests now and then end up at the same spot, but on the other side. Uh, so yeah, let's go for that one. So we can also have 120 test. All right, so now we have to cruise on 122 on the speed though, and that will be 100 and, uh, wait, wait, we have to go 123. Okay, let's increase. No, wait, not on this sort of ah, shit. Come on. There, there, 123, okay. That will be 120 GPS speed, all right? All good. So uh, I, oh, oh, what the heck was that? Uh, some phantom brake. Yeah, this car tends to phantom brake a lot. Like seriously, and see, oh, the car is almost over the line there. Then it doesn't find the brake. <laughs> okay, well, all right. So I plotted in on the map here the, the exact spot where we started, and then we will just drive south a little bit, maybe do like a 50, 60 kilometer loop, similar to what we do in Norway, and then we see how it goes. Wow, when you drive faster, you kind of feel the bumps more. Oh shit! Wow. Okay. <laughs> all right. Oh, I just want to see how thirsty this car is in Thailand when we go 120. Well, we're back at the starting point and this car used 261 watt hour per kilometer. Holy macaroni, this car is thirsty. All right, uh, so let's see now. So now, okay, um, yeah, I need to read it again. We have three segments and we have the, the low speed and then the high speed, and then we will have the return segment. And I can uh, stitch these three segments together to find out the capacity. Okay, it's not ideal because we've been hammering it, but shouldn't matter too much here by the way there are some baustellers we have to go dog slow so um yeah all right but whatever let's go back to bank jack wait can i just do this bank chen central uh, wait um wait how do okay uh well it, it's no, no, not that one no, no, it's, not, it's not that one central festival but we can just uh cancel cancel wait, let me see how smooth this is i know that it's roughly here ish can i just search for bank jack then bang jack Okay, Bang Jack Station, uh, and then it should, yeah, 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 you see, you see, this is the one, number two here, this is the one, I'm pretty sure that one is good, okay, all right, let's go. We are now in the Thai Baustelle, you see, on the other side there is where we would usually travel, but uh, those lanes are not in use, so we have to drive now, share the, this one, and you see how slow we are driving now, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know what's up with the uh, trucks they use in Thailand, but, um, I guess they don't use Volvo FH 750 over here, or they don't use, they don't use Scania trucks or uh, or the Mercedes. Maybe they use some uh, Chinese or Japanese trucks. Uh, yeah, is it, I've seen trucks they go even slower, like like 20 kilometers per hour. Some of the heavy trucks. So yeah, so we're going a little bit slower. But I mean, we don't measure the consumption. Mean, yeah, we are not doing a consumption test now, but we are still measuring the battery capacity. So I guess I need to go a little bit faster eventually so I can end up at the Bang Jack station with uh, less than 10%. Yeah, we'll see. So, so far, uh, so good. We are using uh, the auto steer. Oh, it works in the Baustelle. Well, that's good for now. Oh, look at that. Yeah, what the heck? Uh, you have to be careful when you drive over here, I guess. Did that truck run over it? Almost. Huh? Okay. There was also a tire in the middle of the lane. Uh, yeah, one of these tires here. <laughs> so you have to be careful. <laughs> All right, now we uh, cruise a little bit faster. I estimated that we need to cruise around uh, 115, 120 kilometers per hour uh, to uh, yeah, bring the state of charge deep enough. 
So yeah, I just want to finish this test uh, so it doesn't take too long. So cruising at 90 is painful enough. And actually on the way back now to uh, Bangkok, I'm going to do the Sunda driving. Yeah, let's see how efficient we can make this brick by driving slow and 80 kilometers per hour slow. Actually, it's going to be around 78, something 77, 78 kilometers per hour GPS speed. So we'll see how that one goes in about uh, four or five days. Oh, I noticed something. You see, when I did the 90 test, I felt like it was quite bumpy over here. Um, but that's because the car has, like I mentioned, kind of a short wheelbase and it kind of dips into all the bumps on the road, especially on this side here, where it's bumpier. But I think, I'm not sure, but I think that if we increase the speed and we go faster, okay, go, 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 then we kind of float over the bumps. Okay, now we do 115. Then the suspension doesn't have time to dip into all the bumps and it kind of floats over somewhere. So, I mean, it's still kind of shaky, but I feel like it feels a little bit better. Just like, you know, that Hitler road that uh, it goes from uh, from Germany to uh, uh, Poland, that really bumpy road. Uh, figure that you just have to drive a little bit faster and then you kind of float over all the bumps. <laughs> the similar thing is over here, actually. Hmm, interesting. I don't know if the theory is right or not. We are back in Chiang Mai now, almost done with the test. So, um, yeah, uh, we are now 11 kilometers away from uh, the bank jack charger. And you know, an interesting uh, behavior of this car is that when you have higher state of charge, um, you don't see how many kilometers of range you have, unless you go into the range uh, in here. Okay, you can go here and you can go to the range assistant. Then you see the estimated range, but you actually don't see it in the instrument cluster until you have 15% battery left. Then suddenly down here, you see estimated range left. This is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe a Volvo Polestar. I'm not sure if Polestar is also like this. Maybe they just don't want to confuse people about range uh, or yeah. Okay, so at 12%, we start seeing a little bit of power limit here. Uh, well, a little bit. I mean, we still have, yeah, I mean, this, the car still feels quite snappy. Ah, and then he bugged me about. Okay, I'm holding the, I put the meat on the steering wheel. Okay, we're still driving. Oh, uh, yeah, it's low now, all right. Well, we have more and more power limit now. But um, yeah, I decided to uh, head over to the PTT station instead. It charges faster and we have a 7-Eleven open over there. At Bang Chak, everything is closed at Bang Chak. So I'm a little bit hungry. I just want to have a little bit of snack. Yeah, so now I just have to follow the roads here towards the airport. And then we'll see how it goes over there. Uh, it's it's a 200 amp charger. So I want to see how much was I getting, by the way. Did I try it during Bangkok Challenge? Oh, wait, wait, this one. We're supposed to get around 80 kilowatt from it, not 50 from the Bang Chak station. Okay, now we are at 7% turtle mode is here and the car actually feels kind of sluggish. But okay, I actually changed my mind. I have to go over here instead. Okay, this is the last leg, 148.8 kilometers, 215 watt per kilometer consumption. All right, and then 7% left. So based on all these numbers, I can estimate how many kilowatt hour we have. But okay, so the reason why I came here to the PT star charger, Alex charger is because uh, when I pass the the other charger uh it was actually occupied it was a pussycat charging over there so damn those pussycats are everywhere man oh we're getting 120 kilowatt this is good because this charger has been semi kaput for a while so i remember that the left uh, plug here gave me only around 40 kilowatt and then the right plug gave me around 60 70 kilowatt i don't remember but now at least it's giving me 100 well can we see uh, 120. I think the reason why we're not seeing 125 right now is because the voltage is a little bit too low. So soon enough, we should hit 125 kilowatt. Yeah, okay, so whatever, this is good if we are charging that fast. But okay, um, now I just need to find some food. Okay, you see, this, this one is closed too at night. Uh, oh yeah, huh, you see, this? here's the difference between the PTT charger. I mean, the, yeah, this is the PT station and then the PTT station. But uh, over here, you see that uh, there is a convenience store, which is also closed. But at the PTT stations, then this, there's always a 7-Eleven over there and it's always open. But at least the... All right, the noodles are here. I always go for the egg noodles. This time with um, pork, red pork. This is called mudang. 
they also have modern with uh, rice in many places, but just want some hot noodles now. Uh, they call it Robinson there. And then two at night, we have noodle shop open. <laughs> this is what I love about Thailand. Yes, I ordered, it, ordered some noodles and then we already have green Fanta ready here. Oh yeah. All right, the noodles are here. I always go for the egg noodles. This time with um, pork, red pork. This is called mudang. They also have mudang with uh, rice in many places, but just want some hot noodles now. Okay, let's try the soup. Mmm, mm, this is good. Mm. There's something about having noodles three at night by the road. Usually this road is quite noisy and busy in the daytime, but now at night, nice and quiet. And then, how is the green Fanta? Mmm, delicious as always. Oh, that was great. That was uh, 67, uh, no, around 70 baht, which is around uh, two euros. <laughs> two euros for noodles and uh, uh, green Fanta. Yeah, man, this is what I love about Thailand. You know, you don't have this shit in Norway. No, no, no. There's something about having nudes three at night when the car is charging over there. Yeah, all right. And also it was interesting, huh? yeah. Uh, many people, my, many Thai people, they hear that I don't speak 100% clear Thai. It's like 90% clear. Uh, and then also I have a Northern accent, but I don't speak it that much. So many people ask me, Thai people like, well, uh, where are you from? Or I say, well, I'm a Chiang Mai boy, but I, w I lived in uh, Norway for most of my life. And they were like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then I'm from Chiang Dao. And they're like, oh, you're from Chiang Dao. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, let's see now. How is the car going? Okay, let's see now. Yeah, okay, it's taking 74 kilowatt, but we are 67%. All right, uh, but yeah, so this one charges way faster than the PA charger, but in the future, actually not too long, then we will probably see something like 150 to 200 kilowatt chargers in Thailand from the PA company. So, all right, let me um, summarize the whole range test. Okay, but the test shows that uh, we have roughly 400 kilometers of range only. That's not too good for a relatively large battery, but it's mainly because the car is so inefficient, it's so thirsty, but we already saw that in Norway. And again, we confirm it here that it is also thirsty in Thailand. The consumption in Thailand is slightly better than Norway. I'm not sure why, maybe because we have pretty much perfect condition here. Nice warm temperature, but then uh, not too hot. Uh, so we don't have to run the HVAC too hard and so on so yeah but uh, <laughs> when you go at 120 kilometers per hour you get less than 300 kilometers of range and that's not really that great and also I estimated that uh, the net capacity based on this test even this car has 15k on the odometer is 75 kilowatt hour and then I have measured best case in uh, Norway is 75.8 kilowatt hour so it seems like we don't have too much degradation on this battery which is good and then, uh, but compared to Model Y, for example, then this this Volvo just loses on pretty much everything when it comes to range and charging speed and uh, consumption and everything, right? Uh, actually, consumption kind of matters if you have to pay a lot for electricity nowadays. But I guess people who want this car, they don't care if it's thirstier. They don't want an iPad on wheels, right? They just want physical buttons they can touch, that which will never change over the updates, right? So yeah, I guess there's still a point with this uh, Volvo. But in Thailand, on the other hand, it's a different story because over here, this car cost more than a Model Y performance. So it, a lot more than Model Y long range also. So in Thailand, uh, then it, it, it's almost, I, I don't understand why you would buy a Volvo in Thailand because the Volvo, I mean, because the Model Y is such a way better deal over here. but. I guess you guys don't care about that. Okay, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.